What's gaming gamers? Today I've got a build guide for you using the Warlock exotic chest piece Vesper of Radius. This is a build I use when going for a platinum run in the coil activity, as well as being my go-to arc build when arc surges are active in activities. This build is remarkable in legend difficulty content across the game and is serviceable in master difficulty activities as well if you play smart. But before I get into the build itself, I'd like to shout out our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs. If you're looking for people to play any content in Destiny with, ranging from ritual playlist and seasonal activities all the way to raids and Grandmaster Strikes, feel free to join the Discord server. We welcome anyone, no matter how new or seasoned you are, and all of us will teach encounters if you don't know something. If you're interested, hop into the Discord server and play some Destiny with us. The link is in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me play games more often, come hang out with me over on Twitch. I usually play whatever game I feel like over there, so if that interests you, the link for that is in the description as well. With my promotion now over with, I can get into the build itself, starting with the Vesper of Radius exotic chest piece. Vesper of Radius has the exotic perk Planetary Torrent, which causes your rifts to periodically release arc shockwaves. These shockwaves release every 5 seconds the rift is active, with the first shockwave releasing 1 second after the rift is cast. Any enemy killed with these shockwaves will explode, dealing damage to any enemies nearby to them. Additionally, if running the arc subclass as this build does, enemies killed by the rift will see their on-death explosion apply the blind debuff to nearby enemies, which acts as a fantastic source of crowd control. Finally, when surrounded by three or more enemies, your rift's recharge rate increases significantly, with three enemies granting your rift a 250% increase to its recharge rate, all the way up to being surrounded by six enemies granting a staggering 1500% increase to your rift's recharge rate. All of this makes Vesper of Radius a significant ad clearing utility and is especially well suited for solo activities in small, claustrophobic rooms which are often the most dangerous encounters. Now that you know what the Vesper of Radius exotic chest piece does, I can get into the rest of the build, starting with the subclasses setup. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll get into detail about what each subclass element does, why I've chosen it, and any alternative options, should there be any. For the prescriptive setup, run the Chaos Reach Super, the Healing Rift, whichever jump you prefer, the Chain Lightning Melee, the Pulse Grenade, the Arc Soul Aspect, the Electrostatic Mind Aspect, Spark of Discharge, Spark of Magnitude, Spark of Resistance, and Spark of Shock. To describe the subclass, firstly, the Chaos Reach Super is simply a boss damage utility. Chaos Reach kind of sucks in comparison to most other supers in the game, so you'll be more reliant on your heavy weapon for boss damage in most cases, but it's still a free bit of damage onto any bosses you need to deal damage to. You can also hot swap to a Geomag Stabilizer setup and then use your Chaos Reach, but in most content you really don't need to be worrying about hot swapping to different builds. You could use the Storm Trench Super if you want, but this build is designed specifically for ad clearing and as such doesn't really require the ad clearing nature of the Storm Trance Super. Onto the melee, the Chain Lightning melee is chosen for its ability to jolt enemies damaged by the melee. Jolting enemies is a requirement for this build, as with the Electrostatic Mind aspect, defeating jolted targets always generates an Ionic Trace. Ionic Traces are incredibly beneficial to this build's effectiveness, as the increase to ability uptime, and specifically Rift uptime, are necessary for survivability. For the grenade, you can really use whichever one you want, but I find the Pulse Grenade to be the most consistent grenade. It does have one of the longest cooldowns of the Arc Grenades, but it's very good at damaging enemies over time, which is helpful against majors and bosses. Additionally, as it's a stationary grenade, you can use it to hold down an area for a short period of time, preventing enemies from moving through the grenade's area of effect. As for the aspect, firstly, the Arc Soul aspect will grant you an Arc Soul for 15 seconds every time you step into your rifts. While standing in your rift, the Arc Soul's timer doesn't decay. Kills acquired by the Arc Soul count as Arc Ability kills for the purposes of aspects and fragments that require them. While amplified, the Arc Soul's fire rate is increased from 100 rounds per minute to 225 rounds per minute, making it remarkably more potent for dealing damage to enemies. Finally, having the Arc Soul aspect equipped will grant your Rift an increase to its charge rate while allies are nearby, which is helpful when playing in a fire team. Next, the Electrostatic Mind aspect will cause Arc Ability kills and kills on enemies afflicted with Arc debuffs to generate an Ionic Trace. Electrostatic Mind also causes the collection of Ionic Traces to instantly amplify you. Electrostatic Mind and Arc Soul have a nice positive feedback loop with one another, with Arc Soul kills counting as Arc Ability kills to summon an Ionic Trace and that Ionic Trace amplifying you which increases your Arc Soul's potency. Onto the Fragments, firstly, Spark of Discharge will cause your Arc Weapon Final Blows to contribute a percentage to a counter that, upon reaching 100%, will summon an Ionic Trace. 
Rank and file enemies contribute 34% to the counter, majors and elites contribute 67%, and mini bosses and bosses killed with arc weapons contribute a full 100% to this counter. Spark of Discharge has no cooldown, meaning the faster you kill enemies with your arc weapons, the faster you'll generate ionic traces. Spark of Discharge does come with a 10 point deficit to your strength stat, but as you'll see shortly, this doesn't matter. Next, Spark of Magnitude will cause your pulse grenade to pulse two more times for a total of eight pulses instead of six. This simply increases the overall damage of your pulse grenade, as well as increasing the total time the pulse grenade can hold down a spawn or a choke. This makes the Pulse Grenade even more potent and will help with dealing damage to more stationary elites like Cabal Colossuses or Vex Cyclopses. The third fragment, Spark of Resistance, will grant you a 25% damage resistance to all incoming damage when within 15 meters of three or more enemies. This damage resistance lingers for two seconds once you're no longer within range of three or more enemies and is very helpful for increasing this build's survivability when moving to cast the Rift in groups of enemies. Spark of Resistance also comes with a plus 10 stat boost to your strength stat, nullifying the 10 point strength deficit caused by Spark of Discharge. Lastly for Fragments is Spark of Shock. Spark of Shock will cause your grenade to apply the Jolt effect to any enemy damaged by the grenade, which is especially helpful when throwing the grenade into a large group of enemies or at a choke through which enemies are funneling. As the Electrostatic Mind aspect generates an Ionic Trace on the defeat of any jolted target, the more enemies you hit with the grenade, the more enemies will be jolted and the more Ionic Traces you'll generate. As for alternative fragments, there is one fragment combination that works well, the combination of Spark of Focus and Spark of Haste. Spark of Focus will grant you an additional 150% base class ability recharge rate after having been sprinting for 1.25 seconds. This increase lasts until you stop sprinting or start sprinting into a wall. As a Warlock, Spark of Focus comes with a 10 point deficit to your recovery stat, but this won't matter, especially while sprinting with the increase to your class ability's recharge rate. Next, Spark of Haste will grant you 20 points to your mobility, resilience, and recovery stats after having been sprinting for 1.25 seconds. Similarly to Spark of Focus, this buff goes away after having stopped sprinting or if you sprint into a wall, so ensure you're sprinting clear of obstacles to keep the buff active. The combination of Focus and Haste will make sprinting in between groups of enemies remarkably safer, as well as granting you some utility for your class ability. This fragment combination is also very well suited for running this build if you're using the Centrifuge Arc Exotic Auto Rifle, but I'll talk more about weapons later in the video. With the subclass now entirely detailed, I'd normally get into the Seasonal Artifact, but unfortunately, this season's artifact doesn't have any mods that help this build specifically. As this is the case, you can run whatever mods you want in your artifact. Moving on, I'll get into the armor setup for this build, starting with my recommendations for stat distribution. In the top 3 stat grouping of Mobility, Resilience, and Recovery, spec into Resilience first, with Recovery as a close second, and ignore Mobility altogether. Resilience is very important to spec into. Each tier of Resilience grants an additive 3% damage resistance, as well as increasing your total amount of health and shields, making Resilience especially important to have for harder difficulty content. This increases survivability remarkably, and will be very noticeable in Legend and Master content. Recovery is a close second to Resilience as far as importance goes. Recovery dictates the delay between having taken damage and the start of your health regenerating, as well as the rate at which you regenerate your health. Recovery is also the Warlock's class stat, meaning it directly affects the base cooldown of your class ability. Having your Rift off cooldown more often is incredibly beneficial for this build, so having a high recovery stat is recommended. Mobility is the least important stat in the top 3 stat grouping. Mobility increases your jump height and walking movement speed, but as this build isn't designed to jump high or walk fast, mobility isn't important. So, put stat points into other more important stats and ignore mobility altogether. For the bottom 3 stat grouping of Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, spec into Discipline and Strength somewhat equally and ignore Intellect altogether. Discipline governs the base recharge rate of your grenade ability, which is important to have off cooldown often as it's a very effective way to apply the Jolt debuff onto enemies at range. Additionally, the grenade is a fantastic damage option against groups of adds or major and elite enemies, so having a higher Discipline stat is helpful for those reasons. Strength is similar to Discipline, except it governs the base recharge rate of your melee ability. The Chain Lightning ability is a great utility for jolting targets at point-blank range, so having it off cooldown often is helpful if you find yourself nearby enemies often. It also deals a decent amount of damage, even on Legend difficulty, so it can be used as a damage utility against small groups of adds to help clear them out faster. Lastly, Intellect isn't important at all for this build, as the tier of Intellect you have only changes the passive regeneration rate of your super and nothing else. 
There's no point to spec into intellect at all, so ignore it altogether and put those stat points into other, more useful stats. My armor stats have me at 23 mobility, 91 resilience, 80 recovery, 70 discipline, 41 intellect, and 63 strength. With stat distribution now detailed, I'll get into the armor's mod setup for this build. I'll put everything on screen first as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer. Once I've done that, I'll detail everything about the setup, describing what each mod does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. On your helmet, run two harmonic siphon mods and one heavy ammo finder mod. On your arms, run one firepower mod and one heavy handed mod. On your chest piece, simply run whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. On your legs, run two elemental charge mods and one recuperation mod. On your bond, run one bomber mod and two utility kickstart mods. To detail the armor's mod setup, firstly, the helmet's mods. The two harmonic siphon mods will serve to generate a potent orb of power for you upon getting multi-kills with your arc weapons. Orbs of power will be very helpful for this build, as they'll grant you armor charge, health via the recuperation mod on your legs, and super energy. As such, generating orbs of power is a very useful tool for increasing this build potency. Next, the heavy ammo finder mod will simply serve to generate extra heavy ammo for you when getting kills with your weapons. Primary ammo weapons increase the chance of heavy ammo dropping, and exotic primary ammo weapons even further increase the chance of heavy ammo dropping. If you don't want to run an ammo finder mod, you can instead run any of the increased super energy mods, those being Ashes to Assets, Dynamo, and Hands On. These will grant you extra super energy when using your abilities. Next, for the arms mods, the firepower mod will generate an orb of power upon defeating a target with your grenade. Firepower can only be procced once every 10 seconds, but you won't have your grenade up more often than once every 10 seconds anyways, so this intrinsic cooldown isn't really a detriment. Next, the Heavy Handed mod will generate an orb of power upon the defeat of a target with your melee ability. Similarly to Firepower, Heavy Handed can only be procced once every 10 seconds, but you also won't have your melee ability off cooldown more often than once every 10 seconds, so this is also not a detriment. These orbs of power will be very helpful for this build. Normally, you'd have to choose between killing enemies with your weapons to generate orbs of power, or with your abilities to generate ionic traces. With the Firepower and Heavy Handed mods, you won't have to choose and can get kills with your abilities without losing out significantly on orb of power generation. Onto the Chest Pieces mods, simply running whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running will suffice. You could run a Charged Up mod if you'd like, but I don't find the minimal increase to Utility Kickstart's effectiveness to be more worthwhile than the increased survivability granted by resistance mods. Next, for the Legs mods, the two Elemental Charge mods will cause every second Ionic Trace collected to grant you a stack of Armor Charge. Having two Elemental Charge mods equipped is important. If you only have one Elemental Charge equipped, you'll only be granted an Armor Charge for every third Ionic Trace you collect. Thus, having two Elemental Charge mods equipped noticeably increases your overall Armor Charge uptime. Next, the Recuperation mod will grant you 70 health upon the collection of any Orb of Power with no cooldown. This is probably the most important reason to generate Orbs of Power, as in higher difficulty content, Recuperation is a remarkable mod for survivability purposes. Having Orbs of Power effectively act as healing wells makes their collection safer, as well as increasing their utility. Lastly, for the Bonds mods, the Bomber mod will grant your Pulse Grenade 12% ability energy upon the casting of your Rift, which will increase its uptime a noticeable amount. Bomber isn't an active use mod and is brought more as a passive increase to your grenade's uptime if you happen to cast your rift while your grenade is off cooldown. As the rift is the centerpiece of this build, using it just to grant your grenade some energy isn't recommended. Next, the two utility kickstart mods will refund a maximum of 19.2% rift energy upon the casting of your rift. You'll only be granted this amount of class ability energy if you have 3 stacks of armor charge when you cast your rift, but it's incredibly helpful for the rift's uptime even if you only have 1 stack of armor charge when you use your rift. With the armor setup now entirely detailed, I can get into some weapon and weapon perk recommendations for this build. I'll start with a kinetic slot, then detail energy slot weapons, with heavy slot weapons third. Then, I'll describe a few exotic weapons that synergize well with this build. Firstly, for the Kinetic slot, I prefer running a Fusion Rifle in this slot as it provides fantastic damage against Majors and Elites, as well as providing utility in the way of perks like Chill Clip. As for specific Fusion Rifles I recommend using with this build, there are the Riptide Stasis Fusion Rifle from the Crucible Weapon Pool with the perk combination of Auto Loading Holster and Chill Clip, the Scatter Signal Strand Fusion Rifle from the Season of the Wish with the perk combination of Slice and Controlled Burst, and the Deliverance Stasis Fusion Rifle from the Vow of the Disciple Raid with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Chill Clip. For the Energy Slot, Arc Weapons with the Volt Shot perk are the only weapons you should be running. 
Arc weapons will synergize with the Harmonic Siphon mods in your helmet, as well as the Spark of Discharge fragment. And the Volt Shot perk will jolt targets, whose defeat will generate an Ionic Trace due to the Electrostatic Mind aspect. As for specific weapons I recommend using, the Subjunctive Arc Submachine Gun from the Season of the Wish with the perk combination of Threat Detector and Volt Shot, the Ikelos SMG V3 Arc Submachine Gun from the Season of the Seraph, currently acquirable via the Operation Seraph's Shield Exotic Mission with the perk combination of Threat Detector and Volt Shot, and the Oversoul Edict Arc Pulse Rifle from the Crota's End Raid with the perk combination of Enlightened Action and Volt Shot. Lastly, for the heavy slot, I swap between running machine guns and rocket launchers often, depending on the activity I'll be running. Machine guns are great utility weapons against majors and elites, with their boss damage lacking in comparison to rocket launchers. However, rocket launchers are less effective against majors and elites, as their ammo reserves are a resource that holds them back in that aspect. Thus, in activities where you'll be running into lots of majors and elites, I recommend an arc machine gun, and in activities wherein you need to kill bosses, I recommend a rocket launcher. Specific weapons I run with this build include the Song of ur -Ute Arc Machine Gun from the Crota's End Raid with the perk combination of Rewind Rounds and Sword Logic, the Crux Termination 4 Arc Rocket Launcher from the World Drop Weapon Pool with the perk combination of Envious Assassin and Explosive Light, and the 7th Seraph Saw Arc Machine Gun from the Season of the Worthy, currently acquirable when either Banshee or Xur are selling it with the perk combination of Autoloading Holster and Vorpal Weapon. As for exotic weapons that synergize well with this build, there are two of them that stand out from the rest. Firstly, the Delicate Tomb Arc Fusion Rifle is fantastic for pure Ionic Trace generation. Delicate Tomb has the exotic perk Trader's Vessel, which grants the defeat of targets the chance to generate Ionic Traces. Defeating Elites, Mini-Bosses, and Bosses with Delicate Tomb will always generate an Ionic Trace. Delicate Tomb's exotic trait, Tempest Cascade, causes the collection of Ionic Traces to overcharge the weapon for 14 seconds. While overcharged, Delicate Tomb will apply the Jolt effect to the first target damaged by the weapon. This removes the overcharge effect. However, defeating this jolted target will then generate another Ionic Trace due to the Electrostatic Mind aspect, which will then overcharge Delicate Tomb again. This is a fantastic positive feedback loop and will significantly increase your jolt uptime. Lastly, Delicate Tomb's Catalyst further increases the utility of Ionic Traces, as the collection of an Ionic Trace will refill 4 ammo to the weapon's magazine from its reserves. Delicate Tomb is a fantastic weapon for this build, and especially at close range, deals a remarkable amount of damage to any enemy unfortunate enough to find itself in your crosshair. It's only held back by the fact that it's a special weapon, but if you do decide to run Delicate Tomb, you can swap out the Heavy Ammo Finder mod in your helmet for a Special Ammo Finder. This will help with ensuring you have ammo when you need it, but you'll still need a Kinetic Primary Ammo weapon you can rely on when you do run out of ammo. Next, the Centrifuge Arc Exotic Rifle will be great for blinding targets and generating Ionic Traces. Its blind up time is significant and is especially potent when amplified. Centrifuge's exotic perk, Overcharge Capacitor, causes sprinting, sliding, and damaging enemies to charge the weapon. While the weapon has charge, its range and reload speed stats are increased. Furthermore, while the weapon has more than 40% charge, final blows with the weapon cause enemies to explode. In addition, while at full charge, final blows with the weapon cause the explosion to apply the blind effect to nearby enemies as well. Centrifuge's exotic trait, Regenerative Motion, causes sprinting to reload 6 bullets per second into the weapon's magazine. If you manually reload Centrifuge, its charge fully dissipates, but Regenerative Motion allows you to keep your charge while reloading the weapon passively. Lastly, Centrifuge's Catalyst causes the weapon to gain charge at a rate of 7% per second while amplified. The Catalyst also completely removes the passive decay of the weapon's charge if you don't sprint, slide, or damage enemies so long as you stay amplified, but the charge will still fully dissipate if you manually reload the weapon. This 7% energy per second is additive to the energy gains when sprinting, sliding, or damaging enemies, so you'll simply generate energy faster while amplified so long as you have its Catalyst. Centrifuge is a great weapon for use with this build, and is the reason you'd want to run the Spark of Focus and Spark of Haste fragment combination, as you'll be sprinting often with this weapon equipped to refill its magazine. Defeating blinded targets also generates an Ionic Trace via the Electrostatic Mind fragment, so you won't be lacking on the Ionic Trace generation front when using this build. It doesn't jolt enemies intrinsically, but the blind effect is very useful for crowd controlling groups of enemies, and so long as the weapon is fully charged, you only have to kill one enemy to blind the group of them. Now that I've described the build itself in full, I can get into some playstyle tips and tricks for use with this build. Firstly, always use your class ability when near at least one enemy. You can use it to blind groups of enemies, or blind singular major enemies who are being a nuisance to you. It's your choice which is more important in the specific situation you find yourself in. 
Being near enemies does increase your class ability's recharge rate, so getting up close and personal with enemies can be a great boon to increase your rift's uptime. If you're running a submachine gun or the Delicate Tomb Fusion Rifle, being close to enemies is even more highly recommended, as closer ranges allow those weapons to shine even more. Use your grenade and melee abilities to jolt targets after your rift has been used. This ensures the Ionic Traces generated will grant you class ability energy upon collection, which is the most important ability to have off cooldown. Other than that, use your Chaos Reach on bosses, use your heavy weapon on enemies who need to die quickly, and most importantly, have fun! And that's all for this video! Thanks for watching! Again, if you'd like to join our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs, the link to the Discord server is in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me stream some games sometime, come hang out with me over on Twitch. The link for that is also in the description. If you have any questions or constructive criticisms, please leave them in the comments. I read all of them and reply to all that I can. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day!